If you're passionate about Basset Hounds, this podcast is for you. This is Wobegon, the Basset Hound Podcast. I'm your host, Don Bullock. This is episode zero of Wobegon, the Basset Hound Podcast. It includes why I started this podcast, my background with Basset Hounds, and more. My wife Pam and I are very passionate about Basset Hounds. We've had at least one Basset Hound since 1977, which was Maggie that we got from an animal shelter. In this episode, I'd like to share my background with Basset Hounds, what kinds of topics I'll be covering in the podcast. I'm sure that over time, the podcast format will evolve as I get to know all of you better. We've been involved in showing Basset Hounds at AKC Confirmation off and on for 33 years. Over the years, we've had numerous AKC champions and grand champions, including many we've bred ourselves. This is episode zero of the podcast because it's simply an introduction to my background with Basset Hounds, why I started the podcast, and what I plan to talk about. In order to publish podcasts on some hosting sites, they require two episodes, so I'm including this episode along with episode one. Now I need to address the elephant in the room. Yes, Pam and I were breeders. If you're watching YouTube version and visit our website, you'll see videos and photos of all our puppies. Contrary to the opinion of some in our society today, there's nothing wrong with breeding dogs. I'm assuming that you're listening because you love dogs and most likely are enamored by Basset Hounds. If breeders stop breeding good examples of the breed, what's going to happen to our beloved breed? Obviously, it's going to disappear. Yes, there are bad breeders, but please don't lump all breeders into that category. Part of the reason for this podcast is to educate people about what many call reputable, responsible breeders. Along the way, I'll include some references from established Basset Hound rescuers on the subject. Pam and I have now retired from breeding. We just couldn't handle it anymore. It was very difficult, and actually, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> At the local level, we're members of the Basset Hound Club of Southern California and the Greater San Diego Basset Hound Club. At the national level, we're also members of the Basset Hound Club of America. Both Pam and I have served many times on the board of directors of the Basset Hound Club of Southern California, as well as officers in the club on several occasions. This includes my role as the club's president for a three-year term, plus a two-year term several years later. I actually had to stop because of health reasons. We've been supporters of local Basset Hound rescue organizations for many years. <laughs> oh, and Pam and I are notorious for our collection of Basset Hound items. We literally have thousands of things in our collection. Many have referred to our house as the Basset Hound Museum. There's a video on our YouTube channel about our collection. We have a lot of different items in our collection like this bronze that was sculpted by a friend of ours who also owns one of Joy's puppies. This is just one of our many display cases. I've become a resource for at least one Basset Hound organization. I identify items for their auctions. Individual collectors have also requested and received help identifying items in their collections. As you can see, my passion for Basset Hounds is very strong, extensive, and long-lasting. Over the years, I've noticed a lot of misinformation regarding Basset Hounds. My goal is to provide my listeners with stories and opinions based on our experiences with Basset Hounds and what I know from research I've done and discussions with many who have owned and bred Basset Hounds. I'm making it clear from the outset that my goal for this podcast is not to be controversial. When I give my opinion on something, it will be clear that it's my opinion. Wherever necessary and appropriate, I'll back up my opinion with quotes. These quotes will come from official sources, people who are highly respected for their knowledge of our breed, and actual historical accounts. When I'm stating facts, I'll make that clear as well. For historical accounts, I'll quote original sources where it's at all possible. 
When original sources aren't available, I'll quote secondary sources and make sure it's obvious that's what I'm doing. In my opinion, one of the biggest problems that the internet has created is that just about anyone can suddenly become an expert on a subject and many will follow their advice and think what they said is true. Personally, I've read and heard many questionable statements and outright lies regarding basset hounds over the years. My intentions are to set the record straight and provide good information for my listeners. As somewhat of an expert on technology, I'm also fearful of the so-called artificial intelligence or AI-generated information that has been cropping up on the internet lately. Accuracy and truth are not written into today's AI large language models that they're using. The large language models are now being used by many publishers to write articles and to answer questions. Yes, some of the information you read on the internet was created by a computer, not a person. And that computer has no idea what it said is truthful or if it's correct. These large language models are also being used to actually create whole websites, including responding to email questions. A scammer today can easily use them to collect information, photos, and anything else necessary to create a website through AI, and the AI will also create the code necessary to create a whole website advertising puppies for sale, for example. I know some of you are saying, I only adopt dogs from rescue. Well, I've got news for you. There's no reason scammers don't already pose as rescue organizations. That's scary because many people today are buying or adopting dogs using only the internet with no personal contact. Now on to a much brighter topic. I'm also excited to share some of our stories about the Bassets who've been members of our family. Many are heartwarming, but we also have some tragic stories over the 45 years of owning Basset Hounds. I'd like to use this podcast to help educate people about our wonderful breed that's been an important part of our family for so long. Pam and I were school teachers for 36 years. We have a gift in history for educating others. I've decided that there's no time better than the present to start this podcast. It's not just my opinion that this podcast is needed in today's world. According to my longtime friend, Don Smith, who is director at Daphne Land and Bassett Rescue Network, such a podcast needs to be done. She's a big supporter, and I hope to use her as a resource. As I planned out this podcast, I have several segments that I'd like to include in each episode where possible. The first segment that I'd like to do is our personal experiences with our Basset Hounds. Over the 45 years, we've experienced a lot, and so I'd like to share those with you. Another area would be history of the breed. And some of you are kind of like, really? The history of the breed, is that important? Well, why is your Basset Hound the way it is? Why do Basset Hounds like to be together? Why don't they like to be alone? Those are things that are related to the history of the breed. And so I'll be covering quite a few things regarding the history of the breed. Another area that I'll be covering is the AKC standard for Basset Hounds. Of course, those of us who are involved in Basset Hound confirmation shows, the Basset Hound standard is extremely important. It's also important to all the breeders out there. If you're a breeder or you know a breeder, they should be using the AKC standard for Basset Hounds when they breed. And a lot of breeders don't do that today. But for those of you that own pets and rescue dogs, the, knowing the Basset Hound standard is going to help you understand your Basset a little better. Why are they built the way they are? Why do they look the way they do are? Why do they act the way they do? Those are all things that are related to the standard. And what is a Basset Hound supposed to be like? Well, the standard is a written description of what a Basset Hound is supposed to be. Another thing that I'll be covering is AKC news and information. Many of us think of the AKC as just a registry for purebred dogs, but they're not. They're an advocate for all dogs. They actually work with different government organizations trying to make sure that those of us who have dogs don't lose our rights. That's a, become a very big thing lately in our country and other countries as well. 
The AKC also has a lot of events that many of you could participate in. You don't have to have a purebred dog to participate. So some of you that are, have rescued dogs or other dogs that look like a Basset Hound, you can compete in Basset Hound events. Another area that's very important to all Basset Hound owners is health issues. There have been some recent important discoveries about health issues with Basset Hounds, and I'd like to share those with you. I know all of you are interested in issues that are related to the health of your dogs. And of course, an important area that I'd like to cover is Basset Hound Rescue. There are a lot of good Basset Hound Rescue organizations out there throughout the country, and I'd like to support those. There are also some fakes out there as well. You need to understand that not all rescue organizations are really rescuing dogs. Some are actually even scammers that are out to get your money. So that's an area that I'd like to cover. And more importantly than all of those are viewer questions. If you have some questions about Basset Hounds, please submit them to me. I've set up my website so that you can record a question that I can play on the air. And that'll be really great if you can do that. I also will accept email questions, so I have the website set up for that as well. Please understand though, you need to give your full name. I need to know who you are. If you want, I won't read the name on the air, but I still will not accept questions from anonymous or people that are fit, trying to fake their names. I want to make sure that I have questions from real people who really want an answer and are not just trying to spam the rest of us. Due to some issues I'm having with spammers and scammers on Facebook and YouTube, I feel that I must add that I will not tolerate combative statements and spammers. I also will not tolerate any breeders or rescue groups trying to advertise their dogs or puppies. This seems to be happening a lot on the internet these days. In my opinion, it's not a place to sell or buy dogs or puppies. Besides, many of those who make such posts are actually scammers. Those who abuse the internet to bring attention to their agenda or make money will be blocked. Please don't waste your time. If you want to know more about Pam and I, as well as more information on Basset Hounds and reputable and responsible breeders, you can check out our website at wobegonbassets.com. There's a link in the show notes or comments. I'll be announcing upcoming episodes of Wobegon, the Basset Hound podcast, both on our website and on our Wobegon Facebook page. My plan is to post an episode on YouTube the first Monday of every month, and the audio version will be posted wherever you listen to podcasts one week later. Since I've never published a podcast, I'm hoping everything works out as expected. Please be patient if it doesn't. I've set up a whole new section on our wobegonbassets.com website for the podcast. It's actually been published and is ready to go. There you'll find the show notes plus anything like photos that can't be included in the audio format of the podcast. I've also set it up so you can submit your recorded questions or you can email me questions from the website. Thank you very much for listening. Please feel free to give this episode a thumbs up on YouTube. If you listen to the audio version, please help us out with positive reviews on that platform. Those will help the podcast be recommended to others. Speaking of recommending Wobegon the Basset Hound podcast to others, please feel free to do that too. The main reason for this podcast is to educate people about our special breed. The more people we get to listen, the farther those education efforts will be spread. I greatly appreciate all of your help. We'll be gone. The Basset Hound podcast is published in visual form on YouTube the first Monday of every month. A full-length audio version of each episode is published one week later wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our Wobegon Bassett's website for show notes including photos from every episode. You can also find links to the podcast plus information on Don and his wife Pam plus their Bassett hounds.
Wobegone the Basset Hound podcast is produced, researched and hosted by Don Bullock. The music is Do Your Ears Hang Low played by Nasrality from the Philippines. It's available royalty free on Pixabay. Please give this podcast a thumbs up on YouTube and a high rating wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time, this is Don. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>